I did not expect to be able to do this episode. Not because Jet isn't cool, he's objectively one of the coolest characters in the entire show. I mean, my man has a riz to last a lifetime, but I've never gotten the chance to really talk about him because I don't own hook swords. I never actually owned them until today. So now I can not only talk about how awesome Jet is, but I can show you how to use his amazing hook swords. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat and welcome to the Modern Ninja channel. And yeah, I know Ty Lee was supposed to be the next video in the Avatar series. It's still coming, don't worry, I'm still going to do it, but I couldn't stop myself from wanting to talk about Jet. He's literally one of my favorite characters or one of my favorite side characters in Avatar. And this makes me consider adding some of the other freedom fighters on the list. So if you want me to cover them, let me know which one is your favorite. Smellerby, the Duke, Longshot, let me know which ones I should add. However, let's understand why Jet is the BAMF that he actually is. Jet is a charismatic and determined teenager who leads the Freedom Fighters, a group he founded to mess with the Fire Nation using guerrilla tactics after the death of his family and the families of most of the other Freedom Fighters. With none of the group actually being a elemental bender, there's no water benders, earth benders, definitely no fire benders, with none of them being able to control the elements, they all rely on their unique skills to defeat the Fire Nation. Well, that and blasting jelly, lots of blasting jelly. <laughs> Careful with the blasting jelly. However, it would be kind of disingenuous for me to let you think he was a good guy in the traditional sense. Jet was seriously traumatized, both before the show and during it, to the point where he hated the Fire Nation no matter the situation. Old innocent man, kill him. Man with slightly hot tea, kill him. And life only got worse for the kid over time because after trying to turn over a new leaf and lead a better life, he gets brainwashed and killed, or I mean, it's apparent, it's supposedly that he got killed, but he definitely got killed in the series. I'll be fine. He's lying. <laughs> And for any of you who are mad about spoilers, it's been almost 20 years. Chill. If you haven't watched it yet, you probably weren't going to. But one thing's for sure, the war and, well, the trauma that it gave Jet allowed him to be one of the most skilled non-benders in the entire series, and one of the few non-benders to actually hold their own against Aang and Zuko. You must be getting tired of using those swords. Why don't you go ahead and firebend at me? Which is why we're going to be going over the fighting moves that he uses against Zuko later in the video. But first, this would normally be the part where I mismatch uh, different martial arts styles to come up with the perfect style for Jet. But this time, it's really not that necessary. Well, I suppose it's kind of important to get some parkour training in because, well... Jet definitely can use amazing parkour skills. And in order to mimic Jet, we're gonna have to be able to move through the trees fast enough to keep up with an airbender, which is not humanly possible, but we're gonna do our best. But for hook swords, the only style we're going to need is Northern Shaolin Kung Fu. And this will not only give us the ability to punch and kick like Jet himself, but like I said, it'll give us the ability to use our hook swords. Hook swords are basically made to be the perfect sword, designed so that the swords are made to allow lots of options when using them in combat. May that be hooking people, slashing people, punching people, hitting people with the back end of your sword, uh, wrapping people up, all, all those things can be done with your hook sword, as well as even going farther, farther enough to literally hook the swords together for an extended range, allowing you to take your weapons and extend the range to hit more enemies or farther away enemies. These were never really a war instrument. These weren't just some random weapons that you would give random soldiers. These were used by highly trained and highly specialized warriors who specifically trained hook swords because they're so unique and different, but once you master it, you became unstoppable. And just think about it, the ability to manipulate an opponent's weapons with your own is a huge advantage in any combat. 
And that's only one of the advantages. So you know these swords were killing it. But now let's go outside and learn how to actually use them. With our twin hook swords and our combination that we're using for our twin hook swords, we could go in and pick out a bunch of really cool moves that Jet does. He high flies, he flips, he does all kinds of acrobatic stuff. He literally at a couple points connects them together and swings them around. However, there are two issues. One, I wanted to make this video so that anyone at any level could practice this and still, you know, get something from it as well as not hurt themselves. And two, I have bladed, like these are actually bladed uh, hook swords. And if you want to get some like these, I'll leave a link to uh, Karate Mart, the Karate Mart video I did reviewing them. However, the, the, problem about swinging them around is that they're sharp and I don't really want to die on a YouTube video. That's not how I plan to go out. So we're going to take it nice and simple for something that even a beginner can jump into. And if you do want to get into the more crazy uh, hook sword combinations where we're spinning and jumping and twisting and all that stuff, then let me know that you want to see more hook sword stuff and I will absolutely give it to you because these are probably some of my favorite weapons. So the opportunity to talk about it will be nice. Because really, I can only think of Jet off the top of my head that uses these weapons. But I digress. For our combination, we're going to start with a double overhand swing as we lunge forward on our right leg forward. It's really important. Our stances is really important in Kung Fu, and that's what uh, Avatar is based on, or at least the combat in Avatar is based on. And so as we do this, we're going to come into more of a lunging stance, uh, not quite a full front stance, but more of a, of a lunging stance as we double down just like so. After we do our double down, right, we're in the show, we're giving Zuko some time to react, but uh, what we're going to do next is we're gonna chop our table down the center, taking a step forward with our left hand, our left hand, or with our left foot, as our left hand swings straight down through, keeping the other hand up ready to protect ourselves in case of an incoming attack. Uh, the key with using double weapons is making sure not only one weapon is used at a time, they're double. So you're using them in conjunction with each other, one attacking, one blocking. From here, we're going to take that left foot step to our left, slicing a cross, cutting the table at that, that, at that 45 degree angle, as well as going for Zuko's legs. And then we're going to shift our weight into a front stance to complete that cut just like so. So from another angle, we have our double down with our right foot forward. Our left hand swings through down the table, keeping our right hand up. Our right hand slings through, shifting to our left front stance just like so with our left hand up, right hand attacking. And then we're going to step together, step over, as our right hand comes back up for a slice on our left side, or our right side. Man, I can't, I, I don't know why I'm getting my left and rights wrong today, but um, again, double down, right foot forward. Left foot forward, swing through. Slide over to the left, cut to the, at a 45 degree angle, shift cut at another 45 degree angle, just like so. All the way through, our combination will end up looking something like this, where we come down, one, two, three. One more time, I'll do it. One more time, just to make sure it's a good one. Down, one, two, three, just like so. And this is literally a super beginner, super basic one. We are not using our punches, we're not using our hooks, we're not even grabbing and pulling around like we see Jet do so many times. So if you wanna see more of Jet specifically and me do another uh, Jet-centered episode of the Avatar series on the channel, I guess, let me know in the comments, but let's get back inside. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Avatar is one of my favorite series out there. I love getting a chance to talk about it Make sure to stay tuned and subscribe for more videos like this one, obviously. And if you want to get them early, definitely consider becoming a member. It'll get your name at the end of all my videos and it'll get you early access to some videos and, you know, more 
perks as members would, but it will also really help out the channel so I can work on making better and better content for you. But even if you don't, just a simple like is appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, my name's DJ Moore, this is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. Be the modern ninja, but left off. Just know I'm dangerous. I'm on that Bruce Lee, flow like water, state of mind Got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pin Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim Out here flashing chains while your boy been in the gym Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to